in search of the wild horses of Cedar Island. Of all the herds of wild horses along the East Coast, the Cedar Island horses are the least commercialized. They live quietly on about a thousand acres of lush marsh grasses. Their home range is a private sanctuary. This herd is privately owned and managed by Woody and Nina Hancock. As local Down East people, they have a deep love for horses and the history of their community. They made arrangements with 10 to 15 other local landowners to allow the horses to freely roam and graze as they have in the past. The horses travel between seven different islands over four miles. As you can see from the map, they do a lot of wading and swimming. If you are interested in the history of the horses, the local people simply say there have always been horses here on Cedar Island. Nina herself remembers pony pennings when she was a young child. Back in the 1950s and 1960s, when horses were being removed from nearby Corbanks and Ogrecoke, some of them were rehomed to Cedar Island. Cedar Island, although close, was not an outer bank and not affected by governmental mandates. These horses then have the same genetic Spanish traits as the other outer banks horses. When other coastal herds need to bring in new breeding stock to maintain genetic diversity, Cedar Island horses become good candidates. In fact, Cedar Island once experienced a die-off taking the herd down to two mares. Shackelford Banks came to the rescue, giving a stallion and some mares to Cedar Island, and within the past 20 years, the herd has rebounded. We have discussed the early history of the Kerala, Ocracoke, and Shackelford areas in our other videos. In regard to Cedar Island, we will simply say that the earliest inhabitants were Native Americans. European explorers came over in the 1500s and settlers followed in the 1600s. There were conflicts, victories, and defeats. The small settlement on Cedar Island started on Hog Island, one of the islands where horses now roam. Traditionally, people made their living from the sea, fishing, crabbing, clamming, oystering, and boat building. When you visit, you will definitely feel that you are in a maritime environment. If you happen to go to Harker's Island, perhaps to make the trip over to Shackelford, we encourage you to visit the Core Sound Waterfowl Museum and Heritage Center, which will acquaint you with all aspects of Down East, North Carolina. Cedar Island, then, is part of Carteret County and is a Down East community. The area defined as Down East currently includes 14 different towns and villages, with Cedar Island being the northernmost community. According to current census records, Cedar Island has a population of 350 people. As you visit the wild horses of this entire region, starting in Beaufort, North Carolina, you would first visit the Rachel Carson Reserve, then Shackelford Banks, and then Cedar Island. From Cedar Island, visitors can take the ferry over to Ocracoke where there is a remnant herd kept as a living history exhibit. Further up Highway 12, more wild horses can be found from Kerala to the state line of Virginia. As you approach Cedar Island from the south, you cross over a high-rise bridge where you will immediately see a sign for the Cedar Island National Wildlife Refuge. This refuge actually encompasses 14,000 acres, which is more than half of the island. 
It was sanctioned as a protected area for migratory birds, but there are no government offices on this parcel. There is a visitor center, but it is located at the Matamuskie National Wildlife Refuge because Cedar Island and Swan Quarter Refuges are part of the Matamuskie complex. When I first saw the refuge traveling towards the ferry, all I could see were miles of lush grass, golden in the setting sun. It was like looking at a sea of gold, a sight I will never forget. The refuge, I learned, is actually famous for this terrain as there are 5,000 acres of high marshland called the Great Marsh. Could the horses roam here? We are sure that they could live in this refuge terrain, but since this was specifically created through the Migratory Bird Act of 1964, there has been no effort to offer a grazing permit by the government and the Hancocks and other local residents have not requested one. Down East people, being remote, have strong community ties and take care of each other. Before the new high-rise bridge, there once was a barge on cables where people pulled themselves across to the mainland. Cedar Island is protected by Core Banks and Plymouth Island, part of the Cape Lookout National Seashore. The Atlantic Ocean is actually about five miles to the east of Cedar Island. I would describe Cedar Island as an eclectic area. You will see different kinds of dwellings, some very old and historic structures, lots of boats, an old cemetery, one small store, a well-kept Methodist church, and then the famous ferry terminal. The ferry terminal is actually very nice. Traffic spikes in the summer months, although commuters use the ferry regularly throughout the year. Cars pay $15 for the two and a quarter hour crossing, while RVs and big vehicles can pay up to $45. Winds in excess of 30 to 35 miles per hour will prevent the ferry from operating. Interestingly, the ferry crossing is considered to be an extension of Highway 12. There is detailed information online. The ferry terminal, which put Cedar Island on the map, so to speak, opened in 1964. The Fulcher family, Down Easters, had already built a fishing pier there with a concession stand and grill in 1953. There were no paved roads or telephones at that time. By 1955, they added a dining room to the grill and an eight-unit motel, which they named the Driftwood. About the time that the ferry operation started, the Driftwood offered 38 rooms to rent with a remodeled dining room, a convenience store, a hardware store, and a laundromat. Through the years, times changed and hurricanes did their damage. In 2003, the store was closed after Hurricane Isabel. By 2015, the motel was empty and the Fulchers decided to retire. During the 1990s, Waylon Cato had opened a popular riding stable nearby called the White Sand Stable, creating the famous beach ride still available today. In 2017, we traveled up to Ocracoke and saw the rundown motel. The whole area had a look of dilapidation, but we learned the good news that the property had been purchased and was going to be revived. During our recent visit in 2018, we were very pleased with the new Cedar Island Resort which is taking form as we are making this video. We learned that three families from Ohio purchased the property. One of the old motel buildings has already been refurbished and work is underway on the other building. The RV park is being renovated along with Sharky's restaurant and a small visitor center. The stable, which had fallen into disrepair, is being transformed while a first-rate writing program continues. Kelly Sheridan, wife of one of the owners, has taken the reins of the writing program, pun intended, and is doing a great job. She is continuing the famous beach rides which skirt along the Pamlico Sound shoreline crossing creeks in the bargain. As you approach the ferry terminal, you will not see any signs for horse tours, either by vehicle or boat. As stated, these free-roaming beauties lead a secluded life. 
Nina Hancock actually told me once that the best way to see the horses is by boat. There is a public boat launch where a person could bring his or her own boat to go exploring. As always, it is a good idea to talk to a local mariner if you haven't traveled these waters before. We also think it might be possible to find a local to take you out on a boat since fishing charters are available. However, they probably wouldn't be able to give you much information about the horses. We asked Kelly if the resort would consider offering wild horse boat tours since they are currently offering pontoon echo tours. She told me that they are certainly open to expanding their activities to accommodate visitors. It wouldn't hurt to ask. Can you walk to find the horses? Yes, you can. Even though the resort owns the property down to the first creek, we were told that no one owns the shoreline up to the high water mark. Walking is certainly doable. You would have to find a place to park, and I would park near the stable. Kelly told me that people have chosen to walk across the first creek because it is doable if you don't mind wading in water up to or over your knees. She further told me that the wild horses can often be seen on this second island. If you are still looking, then you might consider crossing the second creek. The last creek would require swimming. If this sounds like a lot of effort to you, then let us recommend by far the easiest and most doable way to find the wild horses. Sign up for a ride on horseback. As you approach the new Cedar Island Resort, you will see a sign for the stable. Reservations can be made online. You do not need to be a proficient rider because the horses are well trained and will walk and kindly wade through the creeks for you. Children can be on a lead line. As with any free roaming horses though, sometimes you just seem to miss them. In this video, we were going back to the stable when we saw these three horses casually walking back towards the first creek from the barn area. Katie Smith, a competent trail guide who continues to work at the stable as of August 2018, told me that the horses sometimes do indeed roam all the way to the stable. There is a fence though that keeps them out of the RV park. Woody and Nina have been called to retrieve an occasional traveler. As of August 2018, the current herd consists of 44 adult horses and 12 foals bringing the herd size up to 56. A gorgeous stallion named William was turned loose in 2017 and he was a successful breeder for sure. He has now been gelded, there are other geldings in the herd, and the Hancocks are raising another gorgeous stud colt named Leroy to be turned loose next year. Foals are named after the oldest residents on Cedar Island. Woody also explained to me that a new stallion introduced to a herd can run himself ragged in his efforts to breed. He believes in a limited breeding time for new stallions. Vet students from NC State in Raleigh come to assist with the needed medical procedures, so there is a yearly roundup of the horses on Cedar Island, but it has not yet evolved into a public event. The Hancocks are currently thinking that a herd size of 40 to 50 would be optimal for the area. With the proliferation of new foals, they are considering the sale of some of the babies as part of their management program. Nina and Woody keep records of their herd members. 
and are working to maintain the varied bloodlines as genetics are an important component to any wild herd. People who have been able to observe the Cedar Island beauties cannot help but notice that these horses are especially strong and vibrant. Their environment really suits them and no wonder they have lived on these islands and marshes for centuries. Wild horses, God's creatures, symbols of freedom, and good for the soul.